So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Corrado. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to do the Horizontal Stripes Crochet Scarf. Using two Ogos and the colors are Lippy and Baja. This is Karen Colorama Ogos that we're going to be using. Now there's no yarn to be able to manipulate. You see that there's stripes but you, if you look really carefully you'll see that the yarn is changing on its own. So you're going to use one Ogo for going there and back and then just let it hold and then do the next Ogo there and back and you're going to carry up the yarn on the side. So but before we get started I'm gonna show you how to open your Ogo and also how to do strategy of just being able to pull apart the colors if you wish to do that. But this one here you start at one end of your Ogo on both of them and just, you just work yourself out and it will be quite amazing. So what I'm going to do is show you that and I'll be right back in a moment. So let's open our Ogo and what you wanna do is put your hands in behind and see this hole. You wanna just use your fingers and just push those flaps up and the top will peel and you're just gonna pull back and it is sticky right in the midpoint and you're just gonna pull and there is your Ogo. One thing that you should know is that the colors are equal length all the way around but they don't always start at the exact same spot. So a part of the color may be over on the other part of, of the side. So we wanna take it out just like that. Put that aside and you wanna pull like this and this will reveal a plastic tie that is in between. So take in your scissors and that will open it and then grab that tie and pull and that will take that out. So that's what's holding it as a ring. So you can see that this color here is also on this side. So when you start your idea you may want to start at a particular point if you want the entire color sequence. So if you wanted to start with this color and not this color all you have to do is that you just have to reach in with your fingertips and just pull like this and just kind of hold the colors and you'll see that the ogles will split apart like this. So if you wanna do color play that's exactly how you do it and there is the color transition change right there. You can snip it and then begin at this point and therefore you have a fresh color of this and when this comes back into play later you can bring it back around and have the Ogo finish. So the way that this is wrapped um, is really quite fabulous but it also allows you to change color. So if you wanna change any order of anything just separate it and then just use it and they recommend that you put it into a plastic uh, a Ziploc bag if you want to but if you crochet as fast as I do I just get a salad bowl. Just put all five pieces into the salad bowl and that's something that I would do for myself. So if you look really carefully at this one here you can see that it changed color right here. So you can do yarn strategy play as far as like making colors different from what it appears but this has been designed for beginners so that you can start with a no go. Go across and back let it hold and then across and then back let it hold and then grab the yarn from this one and then bring it on up and you will see how it's going to work. It's actually really neat. It's going to be using half double crochets as we're going along and we are going to be using half double crochets in the back loops only. Now if you're new to crochet and never crocheted ever. We have a hat that we did a tutorial for. This is an absolute beginner level hat and the tutorial has been presented is if you don't know how to hold the hook or the yarn and going very very slow. It's an hour and a half video and being able to do the basics and half double crochet is in that plus single crochets and it's a lot of good little great tips as well. So you can see this hat. I'll put a link in the more information of this video for this hat if you wish. Now we're gonna get ourselves started and we have our Ogos and you're gonna have two and I'm just gonna bring that up now and demonstrate. So what I have here is two Ogos. They're different colors and to make this really work if you would like to use the same color you can do that as well and you'll see that it will go through. So as I'm crocheting along it will mag magically just change on its own. So you just have to work through each of the Ogos right into the very end. So let's begin. You're going to need a six millimeter size J crochet hook. If this is a beginner level pattern for you just make sure that you understand that when I crochet I do little swatches just to show you the technique. I leave you information and of course you can refer to the pattern at any time. So let's begin working on our scarf together. So as I mentioned there's beginner tutorials like right from the absolute scratch. So I'll just try to take my time but I'm not gonna over explain. So what we have is that we're going to start off with the slip knot to begin. And we'll use our six millimeter size J hook and just grab any one of the Ogos 
and you can begin. So you can do the other color first or this will go depend, it's up to you. So now you need to chain 202. So all you just gotta do is just row boat it back. So yarn over. So one and two, three, four and five and go all the way to 202 and then just put me on pause and I'll meet you right back here where I'll show you what to do next. So I'll see you when you get 202 done. Now let's pretend that I did 202. I can demonstrate what you need to do. So we're gonna do the first row. There's only two rows in this whole entire project and that's what we're going to begin. So we're going to go third chain from the hook. So you count back. So one, two, three. So one, two, three and go to the back hump of the chain and you're going to half double crochet. Now in this pattern the first chain that we just skipped does not count as a stitch. So don't count that as a stitch in the future. So continuing along with the chain I need you to half double crochet all the way across. So we're getting ourselves started on this particular example. So go all the way across just half double crochet across your chain. Take your time it's not a race. Enjoy the stitching journey and I'll be back at the end of the chain. So put me on pause now please. Now a tip I wanna leave for you is that the first ball that you started with is considered contrast A and so that whole ball is considered contrast A and the other ball is considered contrast B and that'll come into play uh, with those definitions when it comes to the fringe. Once you get all the way across we're gonna turn and work and we're going to do the next row which will be the same row for all of the, of the rest of this scarf. So let's turn it around and let's begin row number two. Now this row and all the remaining of the rows are going to be the same. The only difference is that every two rows are going to be one color. So I have one more row to do this color. The chain doesn't count as a row and then we're going to just switch over and I'll show you how to do that as well. So when you start this row number two you're going to chain two. That does not count as a stitch and we're gonna go in the back loop only. So if you're new to crochet there's two loops and that equals a stitch. The loop that is closest to you when you look at it like this is a front loop and the loop that is away from you like this that's considered a back loop. That's the loop that you wanna play into. So you're gonna half double crochet so wrap the hook and going into the back loop of the very first stitch that you're in. Okay and then continuing on the back loop all the way across your row. For those that are familiar with crochet you're gonna find that this scarf will go pretty fast. And for those that are learning to crochet welcome to the wonderful world of crochet. We hope that you can enjoy your stitching journey with us. So I am an informal host as I teach so I do a lot of uh, little memory hooks, a lot of uh, informal verbiage really and uh, sometimes I tell a little bit of stories once in a while but I try to keep it primarily on crochet here on the channel. So you're just going to have to crochet yourself across. Put me on pause now and we'll meet you at the end of the row in just a moment. So when you come up to the end we're going to go into the very last stitch. It appears that there's two stitches left. There's only one. The chain two doesn't count as a stitch. So you're gonna half double crochet in the very last one. In doub half double crochet you end up with a little bump that comes out. That's normal. So that's up to you. That If that happens then that's, that's normal. But what I want to do in this one I have two rows of the same color. So I'm gonna back out that again once, once more and I'm gonna change the color to the other ball that we have. So or the other ogo sorry. So you're gonna wrap the hook and come in and what I want to do is just lay this down and grab the strand from the next ogo that I have and I want to put it into a slip knot first just to secure it and I wanna use that one to finish off and what that will do is it'll lock the other color into position and this color is then ready to go. So let, don't cut this color, let it hold and I want you at this point to turn your work and we're going to begin row number two all over again. So let's do that next. Now if you wanted to do yarn strategy this is exactly what you would do. You would change it like this and then just leave the strand on top of the line so that you can trap it. So you're just gonna do number two again so you'll chain two and when you do the back loop only what you wanna do is scoop up under so just yarn over and scoop up underneath that straggler or the tail and go in the back loop of where the first one is coming out of. Okay. 
and by doing that this will get hidden underneath the stitch. Once you get, the first one's always a little tough so and then just snug on it when you're ready. So just keep this down probably about two inches and when you crochet and going into the stitch leave it so that this strand gets wrapped underneath the stitch. Not behind the stitch but right in the stitch itself and you're going to back loop half double crochet yourself all the way across. So what I would want to do is that I think I've got this buried enough I'm just gonna let it drop and then just continue along then as you normal just in the back loop half double crochet. So please do this all the way across. I'll meet you at the end of the row in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way across and I make sure I go into the very last stitch. Can you tell how many are left? Just one. So just one in the back loop because that chain two does not count as anything. So don't add another one there. So then you'll turn your work and then head back. So chain two continuing with the back loop only and just half double crochet yourself all the way back. So when you get all the way back the very last stitch we're gonna change the color back to the other logo. And that's how the striping is working on this thing. So the striping is changing color when the ogo itself changes color. And so it's almost random but it's really quite artistic at the same time. I'll see you at the end of this row in just a moment. So because we went over the strand here you can safely cut that if you see it. If you didn't then you'll have to use a tapestry needle to hide it. And then you're gonna go into your very last one. So you'll wrap and because it's your very fast one, a last one and we wanna change the yarn we're gonna let that fall and we're going to grab this one just tighten it a little bit back up and let it travel up on the side like this and we're gonna bury that with tassels anyway so you'll never see it. And so therefore you can turn your work and begin again. So chain two and back looping only and you have no yarn tails to deal with because you're just carrying up the yarn instead of having to deal with all, all that cut yarn. And so you'll go back and forth with this color. So um, let me do that and then I'll be back in just a moment and I'll move you in the pattern to what you need to do uh, next and we'll also cover the fringe today. So I'm coming all the way back across and so at the end of this I would wanna change color again. So the total scarf width is approximately nine inches and you wanna finish with um, B which is contrast B. So contrast B would be this color or this ball or this ogo. Sorry I keep saying a ball but it's an ogo. So you wanna finish with that ogo being the very last one. So what, in order to maintain the pattern as you know it then I would have to then carry up this yarn like I showed you and then go back and forth and that's where you would uh, like as long as it's nine inches wide. So take a tape measure and measure that. When you're satisfied with it I'm gonna show you how to end. So when you're satisfied with it just pull through in the final one so don't change out the color and I want you to put it through a tapestry needle to be able to hide it. And you can find these instructions on the pattern as well. And so you can just put it through a tapestry needle, needle. let me show you how and just putting it through. This is the best way if you try to weave it in with your crochet hook it will fall out. So just dragging it underneath the yarn and underneath the yarn meaning underneath the stitch. Don't drag it on the edge and you're gonna go through and when you pull on it don't change the shape and then go back in the opposite direction and then finally go back in the opposite direction again. So three times is the magic charm. Now we have that other color that is also holding. So in the real ex example it'll be this color it will be A that's actually holding. So you're just gonna trim that. That's gonna come out if you don't uh, secure that in. So just put it onto a tapestry needle as well and stay within the same color so it's not visible. And just go up underneath the stitch work. And again back and forth a total of three times. So do that with any yarn tails that you have. So if you're gonna do color play where every uh, line is a different color you, um, you would wanna do this as well instead of carrying it up on the side. 
Okay, so what else do we have left? We have the tassels to make, or the fringe to make. So the, there will be yarn strands that you'll cover when you go to do the tassels, so let, or it's going to do the fringe, I'm sorry, but that I keep calling it tassels. So loose, uh, secure all your loose ends, and then we're gonna begin to do the fringe next. So once you get your scarf done it will be obviously much bigger. You'll have the stripes so you have contrast A and contrast B so it's just A, A Ogo, B Ogo. The one side will be completely finished like this and the other side is where you carry it up. So you have one side that has all of these. So I'm gonna show you on this side because it, it, it's helpful. So it says to use contrast B so the B Ogo in order to make the fringe. So what you're going to do is that the way that I do it is that I take a tape measure and I measure out a total of 16 inches. So I'm just gonna say that I did. So once I, I measure it I just hold it so I don't trim it and then I just pull like this and pull it through the whole 16 inches and then fold it one more time like this and pull it through the whole thing as well. And what I'm doing is that I'm getting my inches without cutting three separate strands at the same time and it's just one cut and all three of their strands are at the same time. So don't cut anything until the very end. Now to put it on what you have to do is that you have to stick the hook from the back side. So if I'm gonna say this is the front of the work just be consistent and when I go in I wanna go in on an edge and I wanna trap that yarn strand that's just carrying and I'm just gonna loop it through and pull it to the back side and then once it's in the back use your fingers separate it and then put the fringe piece down through like that. And what this is doing is putting in fringe at the end and it just covered up over top of those ideas. So again just measure out another 16 inches. Again I'm just guessing and uh, just fold it over so that you have the three strands, one cut, fold. And what I like to do is that I like to just do a whole whack of those at the same time and then put them onto the scarf. So just moving along the scarf, just kind of spacing it out. Come from the back side and pull it through. Open it and push through. Now when you notice that you have this fringe, you'll notice that there's lines that cross over the front. So the front looks different from the back. So if you turn it over, do you see the difference? So when you go to do the other side of the scarf, what you wanna do is just leave it so that the scarf is facing the same direction so that the tassels are going in at the, at the same, on the same side. So I know on this one here, this is the side that's facing up. So when I go to do this one, I continue with the scarf still facing in the same direction and then I can go in, pull from the back, pull it through and therefore the crossing over of the strands stays on the same side. You See that? So you're just gonna go and work your way down. So I would do one complete side and then do the other side and that's how you would do these particular concepts. Once you're satisfied with it because you do have those loops in there, you're just going to eye it up and just cut all of the strands at the same time at the same length. What I prefer to do is that I lean it over a table and so it just hangs off the table so that they're all the same hanging width or distance down and therefore when it's hanging you'll get pretty much close to the same. And if there's any that are, are, are just a little miscut you can just trim and just make it look as good as possible. So this would be how you would do this. This is a beginner level project. Um, really fun and easy and this may be your very first project. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Corrado as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Please enjoy and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.